tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we enter the deep forests of Maui, where we'll see some of Hawaii's rarest and most beautiful birds. Then, we'll meet a bird that looks different from all the others, the crested honey creeper called Akohe Kohe. I'll show you how to draw the Akohe Kohe, and then how to paint it. See all this and more on this amazingly avian episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> when I was a kid, I was so excited by birds. I loved discovering new species and trying to draw them. I didn't know it at the time, but almost all of the birds I saw were brought to or introduced to Hawaii from someplace else in the world. The red-headed cardinals came from Brazil, the majito or white eye from Japan, and the minor birds from India. Later in life, I learned that Hawaii had so many native birds, meaning they came to the islands on their own power and successfully established populations here. You can further break down the category of native species into subcategories. One called endemic, meaning they evolved into unique species found nowhere else on earth. And indigenous, meaning they arrived in the islands on their own power but also occur naturally in other parts of the world as well. Though Hawaiian birds were so diverse, many have already become extinct and many more are endangered of becoming extinct. So why are there no native forest birds in the lowland areas? Well, for one, they lost a lot of their native habitat when the forests were cleared for development. But the biggest reason is that they died off of bird diseases that were spread to them by mosquitoes that lived at lower elevations. As a result, our native birds died off in the lowlands and many birds were brought in from other places in the world to fill the void. Meanwhile, our native Hawaiian forest birds are holding on for dear life. On the island of Maui live some of the world's rarest birds. When we return, we'll learn about these native gems, especially the crested honey creeper known as a kohe kohe. The island of Maui is home to several of Hawaii's amazing forest birds, including the green and yellow amakihi, and the alawahio or Maui creeper, named for the way it creeps along the bark of a tree in search of food. The crimson red apapane is one of the more noticeable native Hawaiian forest birds. In this painting, called Cloud Forest, the apapani is perched near a lehua blossom of the native ohia tree. Lehua blossoms are one of the favorite food sources of many of Hawaii's nectar-loving birds. The scarlet-colored iiwi is unmistakable with its curved bill that fits nicely into many flowers of the same shape, helping it to get to the nectar deep within. In this painting called Hidden Valley, the Eevee appears in a rainforest setting with a cascading waterfall and a faint rainbow that appears within its rising mist. One of the rarest birds in the world is the Maui parrotbill called Kiwi Kiu, which got its name parrotbill because of its curved beak that's excellent for extracting bugs and insects out of tree bark. Parrotbills once inhabited Molokai as well as Maui but are now only found in an area on the eastern slopes of Haleakala Volcano. Today, they are one of the most critically endangered birds in the world, as their numbers have dwindled at an alarming rate. The Maui parrotbill has been so rare in modern history that no Hawaiian name was known for them. So, in 2010, the Hawaiian Language Lexicon Committee gave it its Hawaiian name, Kiwikiu, referring to its curved bill, secretive ways, and a cool breeze that blows through its habitat. 
1986, I got a call that I'll never forget. The voice on the phone was Cameron Kepler of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. He said, we've located a nest of the Po'o'uli. Can you be ready to spend some time in the forest and help us document the nest? The Po'o'uli wasn't even known to modern man until 1973, and at that time there were only a small amount of birds in existence. I was dropped by helicopter into the dense Hanavi rainforest, high on the slopes of Haleakala, and day after day, Mr. Kepler and I watched the nesting birds for about 10 hours, recording every move and sound that they made. This painting, called Soul Provider, is of the male bird feeding the female at the nest. This turned out to be the only nest ever collected of the Po'o'uli. In 2004, the last Po'o'uli died in captivity and the species became extinct. During my time in the forest observing the Po'o'uli, I got to observe several other rare birds, including one of my favorites, the crested honey creeper called a kohe kohe. This bird was noticeably different from the others. It was kind of large, and it aggressively defended its favorite lehua blossoms from the other birds. What makes the Akohe Kohe unique is its dark color with splashes of silver and white tipped wing and tail feathers. Its nape and eye patches are bright orange, and its leg feathers are yellowish orange. Their most distinctive feature is the crested tuft of feathers on its forehead that give it its common name, Crested Honey Creeper. The Akohe Kohe was known to inhabit the islands of Molokai and Maui, but now it is gone from Molokai and in recent years, its last population on Maui is decreasing at an alarming rate. Because of its unique coloration and appearance, the Akohe Kohe is a popular bird for artists to paint. Here's a painting by Joanna Manny and another by Tammy Yee. And some glass art by Jupiter Nielsen. Here's a wooden carving by Japan's master carver, Mr. Haruo Uchiyama. In this painting, entitled Akohe Kohe over Kipahulu, the Akohe Kohe warns any Eevee to stay away from its favorite lehua blossoms. In the distance, the majestic waterfalls and valley walls of Kipahulu create an enchanting scene. I used a slow drying paint to do the background, and while it was still wet, I blurred it slightly with a big soft brush. Then, I made the bird and branches in the foreground nice and sharp to create the illusion of distance on a flat canvas. When we return, I'll show you how to draw the Akohe Kohe. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the Akohe Kohe. Now it's kind of like drawing the other birds, you know, the Eevee or the Apapani or just about any bird. Remember that we're going to start off by pressing softly. How are we going to press? Softly. softly. That's right. We're going to press softly so you don't dig into the paper. And that way, if you got to adjust or correct anything, it'll be done easily. All right, so for the head, I'll put the head right around here with a circle. And for the body, for the wing, I'm going to have this bird like we're looking up at it a little bit. So the wing, I'm going to do an oval, kind of connected to a triangle to shape up the wing. For the tail, give him a little fork in the tail like that, okay? All right. The beak, a couple of slightly curved lines. I'll get them with a little bit of an open beak. And of course, that little tuft of feathers above the beak, the ones like that, and they'll be going, Ching! they stand right around there, right in front of the maka. And the maka goes right about there, yeah? Okay. And I give them a little bit, you know, shaping up the cheek and a little action around the eye so we can kind of see that eye. I'll go and swoop the head to the top of the body, swoop the bottom of the head to the bottom of the body, and I'll put in some like shoulder tufts over here. And there we have our wing shaped up. I'll give them a little bit of under part showing there and some lines in those tail feathers. 
I'll put a leg over here and I'll keep one leg up in the body like that. Um, draw a little line to where they're going to go. And I'll put a kind of like a twig over here. He's kind of hanging out on a branch, okay? I'm going to put him next to a lehua blossom on the ohia tree and I'm going to put him right over there. Just kind of put a circle where I want my blossom to go and yeah, this is going to be a bunch of leaves, radiate some lines. It's kind of like a pom-pom over there, okay? So now I got my akohe kohe. I think I'll put another bird in the background, just kind of a flying bird. Little curved beak. This can be like a apapane or something. Yeah, wings and kind of tail open like that. Yeah, this one will just be a bird kind of flying away because, you know, those akohe kohe, they're kind of tough. They like to like chase birds away from their favorite lehua blossoms. Okay, now that I got my formed up drawing of the akohe kohe, I'm going to get a bigger pen. And you can too if you want to emphasize some of these lines. And don't forget your signature. If you like, you can go back and touch up some places. And being that the Akohe Kohe is a dark bird, you can go and add some shading to your drawing. And there you have the drawing of the Akohe Kohe. When we return, I'll show you how to paint the Akohe Kohe. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I go about painting the Akohe Kohe. And I'll be using a reference photo with permission by Jim Denny. For the background of the painting, I'll use these soft colors of the faraway mountains. Then, I'll start to mix all the colors that I think I'm going to need. Before you finish any project, first you gotta start. I'm using oil paints so they stay wet longer and you can get these nice gradual fades in the sky. Learning to paint gradual fades is one of the most important lessons in painting because when you've mastered that, you've taught yourself so much more along the way. After I've got the background covered with paint, it's now time to put in the base coat of the Akohe Kohe. This will establish the shape of the bird. You can do this while the paint is wet or wait for it to dry. Next, I'll start to lay in the habitat where the akohe kohe is going to perch. In this case, it's an alani plant that's in the foreground. You can have a lot of fun painting plants. I make them all in different degrees of detail. You can put reflective highlights on the top parts where the sun's hitting. And I love putting in the part where the light shines through the leaf and creates that bright orangey yellow color. Mixing colors is one of my favorite parts of the job. Now it's time to repaint the Akohe Kohe 
giving it a second coat of paint with more accurate colors this time. Notice how I use bigger brushes than you might think, even to get very thin parts of the painting. With a bluish gray color, I'll start to determine where the highlights of the bird occur. Dark colored birds reflect the color of the sky, which is usually a bluish purple, so that's the color I'll start with. For the highlight of the beak, it helps to have a steady hand. People sometimes ask me why I put my hand up next to the thing that I'm painting. I think it's just to feel its energy. For shiny parts like the feet and beak, I usually start with bluish highlights. Then for the shiniest parts, I'll go to white highlights. Next, I'll start putting in the lightish gray colored feathers. Now for the fun part, adding the bright orange eye ring and nape feathers. Notice that I've previously painted them white and then let the paint dry. That's so when I do put on the orange, the white shines through and makes it more vibrant. The nape of a bird is located on the back of its neck. Notice how bright orange the nape of the akohe kohe is. I use a combination of reds and orange to get this effect. Notice that I like to turn my canvas around sometimes to best utilize the natural curve of my hand. The tuft of feathers on top of the Akohe Kohe's head are usually light in color, but in this case I'm going to give them some shadows so that it sets them apart from the background. I'm also adding a touch of yellowish color to the crest, setting it apart from the purplish color of the background. Then finally I can add in those curved little feathers with some bright thick white paint. Now I'll just enjoy playing with some of the details in the bird. The eyes are what make any bird come to life. Especially that little sparkle. Ding! And don't forget your signature. And there you have an Akohe Kohe on an Alani plant. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Maui's beautiful forest birds and especially the crested honey creeper known as Akohe Kohe.
I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send pictures of you and your art to my website at patrickching.com. <laughs> Aloha.